Hello, everybody. A chilly spring lunch hour today. Mid 30s, I would say, Fahrenheit, probably 34 Fahrenheit. But I still like to get outside. A quick autism related topic that I'd like to talk about would be the brain's ability or inability to filter sounds, sounds from the environment. I would say I have or lack almost, uh, it's maybe an exaggeration to say a complete inability to filter sound uh, in my environment, but pretty darn close. Okay, what do I mean by that? My brain seems to have a great difficulty in being able to prioritize sounds and file, classify, um, process sounds at different levels, okay? Sensory processing disorder, I think, uh, you know, that could be what it would be called or at least in part or similar to that, but what it means is that my brain basically places the same amount of importance to any and every sound that I'm hearing at any given time. So, just to give you examples, if I'm in a restaurant and I'm sitting across a table from somebody that I am going to that restaurant with and they're talking to me, my brain is obviously listening to their voice processing that voice, thinking about it. In the restaurant at the same time, there are many, many different sounds, many different noises that are happening simultaneously. I mean, everything from other conversations at other tables, people even tables and tables away that may be laughing or, you know, whatever it might be kitchen utensils, plates, chairs squeaking, um, ventilation system, cash register, kitchen sounds. I mean, I could go on and on and on, but what my brain does is it's on hypervigilance all the time, and all these sounds are coming at me all the time, and my brain is wanting to analyze focus on and pay great attention to every one of those single sounds with the same amount of attention and the same amount of energy. That sounds odd, but you know, the person that's talking to me that I'm having a conversation with, clearly I should be focusing on them first and foremost really to the exclusion of any of the other sounds doesn't work that way for me. So, you know, it's almost like my brain, if my brain, if you could think about it, if it had eyes, I mean, I do have eyes, but think about the brain, the processing unit having eyes, okay? And that brain is looking at the person that's talking to me. Say there's kitchen sounds over here. Um, that processing unit of my brain is looking over at those kitchen sounds, figuratively looking over at them, thinking, what kind of sounds are those? Okay, what kind of, um, is that the cook talking? Is that a waiter or waitress? What was that sound? Did that sound like maybe a uh, stirring spatula in uh, clicking and clacking in a wok? Uh, stir-frying something, hmm. And then, say the ventilation system starts kicking on. I wonder how long that's going to be running for, um, looking up towards the ventilation system, not literally, but figuratively, you know. Anyway, I think you get the idea. I know that the typical human brain has the ability to recognize that certain sounds are not pertinent 
or important to the situation and the typical human brain has the capability of ignoring those sounds, filtering them out. That would be an amazing sensation, really. I would like to experience that sometime um, because that's, <laughs> that's not what works for me. That's not how my brain works. So think about if your brain was hypervigilant, giving the same amount of attention to every single sound that was in an environment, think of how mentally exhausting that would get after a while because that requires full, full concentration, complete surround sound type of concentration, if you will. And um, yeah, so that's definitely, definitely a challenge. Now, it might be dependent, and I'm not a scientist, but it might be dependent on the actual environment and also maybe even dependent on interest level to some degree. And the reason I say that is because one exception to that rule that doesn't happen as much anymore to me as an adult, but did happen when I was a kid, is that if I was hyper-focused on something that I was very interested in, then I could zone out and it was involuntary. It's not like I could turn it on and off. It just happened where I would zone out on whatever that thing was to the point where it was almost like tunnel vision and it was almost like my hearing and my ears actually shut off. So not filtering something to the background, but basically just completely cutting it off to where I was almost non-hearing. And that's how utterly, utterly focused I was on that particular thing that I was looking at or, or working with or playing with or making. Um, and I know this because my mom in those situations would be standing by me and she would be saying my name multiple, multiple times at escalating volume to the point where maybe after the tenth time she would be saying my name and then finally saying it very loudly, almost shouting. Then it was like I would just start kind of gradually coming to, so to speak, and coming out of it and only then would I just kind of gradually, almost like turning the volume up on a radio, I would start being aware of my surroundings and being aware that, um, that she, she was calling me. And, and she'd say, you know, didn't you hear me? You know, I've been calling your name. I've been standing next to you calling your name uh, 10 times in a row. And I honestly, it wasn't that I was ignoring her, um, I literally, literally did not hear her at all. It was as if there was no sound there. Um, so that is different than, than filtering. And that, it, that is, it's, it's a very, very odd phenomena. I have gotten that as an adult, but very infrequently. And that has only been in situations where, again, I'm very, very focused on something that's very interesting to me and has completely captivated my attention. But even in those situations, I still have that, more or less have that hypervigilance. So I can't even think about the last time that that has happened, that complete and utter tunnel vision type zoning out to the exclusion of everything else. I, I, I guess I really can't even think of when that has happened. Um, I know it has, you know, uh, a few times as an adult, but mainly that's something that happened to me when I was a kid. So that's really that little mini topic there that I wanted to touch on was the inability that I have to filter sounds. If you have that ability, consider yourself fortunate and try to think for a little while about what it would be like if you weren't able to do that. And I actually have a good example that I thought of that might give you an idea of what it's like 
for people like me who can't filter sounds, their brains can't prioritize and filter sounds. And that example that I have, this is something you're going to need to look up on YouTube, key in in the YouTube search field the information, and basically what it is, it is going to be a song. And the name of the band that you would key in on YouTube there would be Yazoo, Y-A-Z-O-O, -O, or, well, you would key in Yazoo, Y-A-Z-Z-O, slash Yaz, Y-A-Z, that would be the name of the band. The name of the song would be I, the letter I, I before E, except after C. That's the name of the song. The name of the album that it's on, I believe it's called Upstairs at Eric's. Okay, but key it in. You'll find the song I before E except after C. And fast forward to the 25 second mark of that song and stick with it for one minute. So from 25 seconds to one minute, 25 seconds. Listen to that span of the song. If you want to listen to the, the rest of the song, fine, go ahead. But no, the example that I want to give that I hope you look up is the song I Before E Except After C by the group Yazoo, 25 seconds to 1 minute 25 seconds. Why? Why do I give you that example? You'll see. But the reason I think that that section of that song is perfect as an example of showing what it's like um, when a person's brain can't filter sounds to the background is because in that section of the song you're going to hear multiple conversations, sounds, things like that, and they're all going to be recorded, each one of them, at the same level or nearly at the same level. So really, I think that is one of the best examples I've found for illustrating what it's like for a person whose brain can't filter sounds to the background. Okay, you'll see how confusing it is. Please try it. Please look up that song. Okay, that's it for now on uh, the inability to filter sound. I hope everyone has a good day, and I will talk to you later in another video. Bye.